for joining us today for our College Counseling Parent Night for the class of 2022. I am really excited to be on this journey as I serve as your support system to guide you and navigate through this process. Tonight, I'm going to share a general overview of the college admissions process. So I invite all of you to share your questions on the chat and I will be happy to answer your questions at the end. I also wanted to remind you that you are all invited to meet with me on an individual basis so that we can address any unique circumstances or questions you may have uh, so that this is not the one and only opportunity that we have to talk. Uh, we can meet as many times as necessary throughout uh, this year. So with that, I am going to share my screen. Can everyone see that? All right. So let's, so first things first, I do be sure that you have my email so that we can arrange our applications uh, as we navigate our college application process and moving forward. Um, I wanted to start with SCORE. SCORE is our platform that we use at our school in order to uh, use it for multiple of, uh, of different features. Uh, all of our juniors have already uh, been invited to be on their SCORE account. And during that process, I've also asked our students to uh, invite parents so that you can be engaged as part of the process. If you did not get invited and um, are going to be part of the process, please let me know and I'm happy to invite you. Um, the, one of the major features of SCORE is that it is there to help you navigate navigate a bunch of colleges and it's a database of about 4,000 colleges and universities. Um, it has really unique filters so that you can navigate by colleges, by major, by geography, and all of these wonderful features that will help you sort uh, specific colleges. I've also, I've also asked students to do the youth science feature. The youth science is a more of a career assessment. Um, it's all together two hours. They don't have to do it all at once. They can do it by bits and pieces and they could just do it throughout their time um, during January to June. Uh, so there's no rush in doing all of it. It's just more about getting more of that personality assessments, kind of connecting with uh, finding that good fit that we want for the students. Uh, the SCORE platform also serves as a feature to request letters of recommendation. All of our teachers are on SCORE, so they are able to request their letter. Uh, there is a process that I've shared with them. Uh, they have to complete a fact sheet. Uh, they are also going to be, ha uh, be a, a folder that I will share with them that's called the College Counseling Folder for, for the class of 22, and they will be able to complete the brag sheet uh, using that document. Another feature is transcripts and all other supporting documents, I sent all of that information to all of the colleges they applied to through SCORE. And it's really important because SCORE uh, is not connected to the college application. So everything they do on the college application side, it's really important that they update and maintain all of the updated information from their college applications on SCORE. Because the only way I can see what they're doing, where they're applying and I can send their documents and just to kind of monitor that they're not missing anything. Uh, there's also a SCORE uh, app that's shared with the students. I know that students live with their phones, so it's an accessible feature that they can actually have the SCORE student app. I did have some students uh, upload it onto their phone, so uh, if they haven't done that, it's there for them to use it as well. All right, so the big question is, how do I use a college? Um, to find that good fit, these are just some of the uh, questions that maybe you can kind of help to find that list of colleges that you might be looking for. 
And a good fit means a lot of things, right? Of course, we're looking for colleges that has their majors or the, whether they can major in minor or they can double major or, or can go undecided. Uh, geography, you know, where do students want to go? Um, if they want to stay close to home or do they want to venture off uh, to uh, the west side of the country or even internationally? Um, the setting, does the student want be in an urban area, suburban or rural, or does it matter? All these things need to be kind of see where the sense will have that good fit. Also size, we have colleges that are as small as a thousand students to thousand students. So finding that good fit on size is also could be one of those features how to choose. Also, does it have the sport or the extracurricular activity that the student might be interested in? What's the culture and the vibe of the campus? Uh, so having an uh, opportunity to maybe venture off to walk on campus could be a good idea to kind of have a sense of the culture of the, of the, and there's a lot of YouTube, a lot of um, resources we can find online around the culture, or I've also had firsthand experience on visiting a lot of college campuses that I could also serve as that resource. Also budgets, right? Uh, we are gonna be paying for college, so we need to know what our budget looks like <laughs> for paying for college. And also, you know, maybe you want to look at schools that do offer merit scholarships or need-based opportunities. And there are lists uh, that have this information I can share with you. Also, when we create a list of colleges, there is no magic number in terms of how many colleges you can apply. Uh, I do have some colleagues in, in, in college counseling that actually make parents and students sign a letter saying no more than 10 colleges. We don't have such a policy. Uh, but the goal is to really come up with a list that's very well researched, very well defined, and not just apply to apply or just because it's a big name school, but it really is finding that good fit. So ideally, no more than 10. You can apply to one if you'd like. It's okay, because if you have legacy in one school and that's the school you want your student to go, that's fine as well. There's no pressure in applying to uh, more than the schools that you need to because there is their cost to all of that. And I, I am mindful that you know, the budget uh, is something important that everyone needs to keep in mind. When we look at that balance of lists, it's important to look at what type of colleges we're applying to. And in our college counseling world, there's names for that. Uh, we call them the reach schools, the target schools, and the safety schools. So having a balance between the three is really important. I've had students have gone against my advice and go ahead and just go to the REACH schools. And that's very unfortunate because as well, those are very competitive. Uh, I like to also consider them lottery schools because it's like winning the lottery in times because the acceptance rate is so low. And even if your student is academically strong, it's still a REACH school for anyone. So that's just an example of the REACH side. So having a balance between really researching some amazing schools in those three categories is something ideal. And, and it really is uh, a better uh, idea to do that so that students feel at ease that they will be getting accepted to some of the colleges that they like. So here are the general requirements. Um, of course, there's devil in the details, but just an overall view uh, their college application. Uh, we will be doing a college essay a workshop on do's and don'ts on how to write a really good essay. We're going to share samples on what those essays look like. I'm gonna have, I have videos of admissions people talking about what they wanna see in essays that I will be doing with juniors. Um, standardized tests, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in the next slide, uh, see whether you will need them or not. Uh, transcripts is going to be all of the grades between 9th, 10th, and 11th, and the interim grades of the senior year. So the calculated grades are going to be of 9th, 10, 11, plus what classes they're taking in their senior year. That's the initial transcript that I will send, and that's where most of the schools will make the determination in terms of the academic piece. I will also be doing a resume uh, where uh, students will create their own high school resume. Uh, there are some colleges that require them to upload their resume uh, in the college application. 
but it's also good for them to understand what a resume looks like, that it's a living document and that they will continue to use that as they move on uh, for the future. If your student is going to be an art major, we know that there is a portfolio involved. Um, generally speaking, you know, art schools don't expect students to be artists from, from the beginning, but some are. Uh, but I just want you to know that during that portfolio process, there's a thing called slide room, and they're gonna usually request students to upload 10 of their best pieces of art. It could be any type of creativity, um, creative writing to a, a picture, a drawing or painting, a, a ceramic piece. It could be all kinds of, they just wanna see kind of like a holistic view of, of their creativity. And yes, there are some schools that could be a little bit more specific, uh, but we'll, we can work on that individually um, if that's the case. For the recruitment video, these are students who are interested in being in colleges for division one, two or three that require, um, that want to get a scholarship or division three uh, to play in competitive sports. This recruitment video needs to be done this year. Uh, the recruit video samples you can find on YouTube. For example, if your student is a soccer player, you can YouTube soccer recruitment video so that you can kind of see some samples. It can be very short. Maybe you already have recordings of, of the student playing, uh, but this, this video that is sent to all of the coaches of the potential colleges that you want to go to. Um, and, and then uh, hope that coaches respond. Uh, so the earlier, the better for more competitive schools, as you may know. Some schools also offer the option of interviews. Uh, I always, always encourage students to actually take the opportunity for the interview, because really getting to know the student and getting to speak to someone that represents the college is very, very useful. Uh, so I have done one-on-one -on -one practices with students around what to look for, how important the language is, what type of questions they're going to ask. So I encourage you to um, motivate your students to do that, even if they're introverts or shy, but this will give them a really nice extra aspect to their, to their um, college application profile. For testing requirements in times of COVID. So as many of you may know, um, many, most schools actually have gone test optional this year uh, even the competitive schools, because there is no opportunity to actually take any SATs or ACTs. However, um, there is a list uh, that's called the fairtest.org. And on this, there are about 1,600 universities and colleges that are currently test optional. There are many colleges that have always been test optional, but the reason why I still want to encourage students to think about these um, testing requirements is because this list is still not reflective of the 2022 um, class. Uh, we don't know colleges are going to decide to go back to requiring these tests. So uh, most of your 11th grade students took the PSAT this year, uh, and that will kind of help them uh, kind of have a point reference to how they're going to be able, need to practice for that SAT. Uh, the SAT ideal date for them to take it if they're offering it because of COVID would be May. There are some June, July, August, September, October date that we can look down the line. Um, for the AT, the next tests are April, June, July. So you can go ahead and register for these tests. And in the event that they don't happen, they will refund your money. They'll just push it back to a, a later date, if that makes sense. Um, also, big news in College Board world, uh, they have canceled the essay option on the SAT, and they also canceled the subject tests. So those will no longer be available or valid or, been ex or they're not going to be accepted by colleges. So if your student decides to take the test requirement, which I still encourage it because we don't know where students are applying and they may need this requirement depending on where they apply. But a good reference would be this fairtest.org because there are colleges who have always been test optional. So if you're still unsure of that, just meet with me and we can, I can tell you whether it's just a now thing or has it always been test optional. In case I know a lot of kids don't like to take these tests, 
So if they can avoid it, uh, I can definitely um, let you know if it's safe to not take the test at that point. So can you can you let us know if um, what you know in terms of tests have they been getting canceled? Are they having them? I I'm concerned if we sign her up for the March one, and we she takes a prep course and she's all ready and raring to go, and they cancel it, then she, you know. So I'm just kind of trying to time it so that she's prepared at the same time as the test. Yeah, that, that's that's a big one because it actually happened to a lot of our families in the senior class this year where they were prepping, they took prep class, they did Khan Academy, you know, did register and they were frustrated because when they thought they were going to take the test, they got the cancellation notice over and over and over again. So that big unknown is just really nerving for all of us. Um, you know, I'm, I'm an optimist, so I'm hoping that as things progress and things do get safer, that uh, schools are actually opening up these test centers for outside students. So as soon as I know anything, I'll be happy to share anything I know. But right now, um, there's a lot of uncertainty around that. What I do recommend is you don't want to pay for a test prep. You don't have to. I am a big advocate of Khan Academy. Khan Academy is free, and it actually partners with College Board so that those PSAT, your students just, they can actually link it to Khan Academy and get personalized practice. So for example, if your student um, do very well in the algebra portion, the practice test that Khan Academy gives them is going to be specifically targeted on the areas where they need the most support, if that makes sense. So think about whether if you wanna avoid test prep, Khan Academy, uh, it, it is research-based. And they do say that if students um, practice for 10 hours, that it's guaranteed that they go up 100 points. So that's one of the things that Khan Academy is, is really good about uh, their data and, and supporting the students. And I know it's on a screen. And a lot of the tech prep agencies are actually also doing online support at the point because of COVID. Um, However, if you do want to do that test prep, I know that I have sent you a couple of um, places that have gotten in touch with us, like Test Prep Revolution was one of them, and I forget the other one, but I did email it to you. But if you want some options on test prep and having that extra support, I'd be more than happy to, to share it with you as well. So Evelyn, uh, I have a similar concern about the testing. I've signed my daughter up for the March SAT. She's actually in the middle of test prep right now. Um, at Kaplan. And so my, my, my concern is the same as the other person, the other parent that spoke up that, you know, we're going through this process, we, we spent the money, which is, you know, it's, it's, it's not wasted money, certainly, because certainly she, she's acquiring skills. But if we find out the test is canceled, then she's got to go through this process again. So do, do you have any sense as to as sort of when, based on last year, or, or the, the seniors that have gone through this, when they actually issue cancellations in advance of a sitting for the SAT? Um, from, from this senior's experience, um, I remember that in a couple of occasions, a uh, parent would call me the night before the test uh, in some worst case scenarios or uh, two or three days uh, prior to the test. Um, it's probably because the schools are not open and don't have proctors or teachers in the building that feel comfortable enough to actually proctor three-hour tests inside buildings. And it really comes down to that. Um, uh, when schools um, are offering it, they're telling us they're not even accepting outside students. So those are some of the reasons why they even were saying that we're gonna cancel or we're only doing it for our own students. So I wish I had a better answer than that, but we really were all over the place in terms of these tests. I didn't get any, any um, real advance notice all they did was cancel and then just push the student to the next test date. Uh, in one example, I had one student test date be pushed like five times and they never took, but they, she still got accepted to college. Yeah, and, and I don't want to belay the point, but there, there certainly sits up, you know, the, the issue with not taking the exam earlier is that if I want my daughter to take it a number of times to increase her score, she doesn't have that opportunity if the tests keep getting canceled. 
And then when we've done some research on some schools she already has an interest in, they indicate that they're test optional only for the 2021 or 2020, 2022 year. They are not indicating that for her year where she will be applying, that the test optional will still apply. So it's, it's inherently confusing and it's sort of frustrating to my daughter as well. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, that's why I feel that it's better to prepare just in case, but it is frustrating. I understand and I hear you. I had students that were very frustrated who were test prep all summer long and continue to do hours and hours, hours of test prep and then they never took it. But I do want to emphasize that if this continues to be an issue, colleges know that. Colleges know that they are not going to be able to ask for a requirement that was not accessible to students. They really don't want students to, you know, drive across the country to take this test uh, just because they feel the pressure that they're not going to get accepted to the college. That is why this year, most schools, even the more competitive ones, have gone test optional. And in fact, some of my college admissions uh, colleagues have felt this was refreshing because they were able to accept more students, not just based on the test, but more in a holistic perspective around their academics and extracurricular activities. So they love the diverse group of students that actually got accepted this year that wasn't so bogged down into feeling that they had to take the test. So colleges understand that. And they shouldn't be held, students should not be held against uh, not taking this test if it wasn't easily accessible. So I hope that kind of helps answer your question. It does, thank you. All right, well, going to some important question, uh, deadlines and dates around college. Um, one of the earlier dates that I wanted to point out is August 1. So this August 1 is when Common App opens. Common App is one of the major platforms where students apply for college. Uh, it's not the only one, there's Coalition and others, uh, but Common App tends to be the, the more popular one that universities tend to use. And it's a one-stop shop for students. They don't have to do multiple applications, but there in some occasions do have college that want students to use the website or another platform. Uh, the next date after that is early decision. Early decision is binding, uh, which means that uh, the parent, the student, and the counselor signed a contract saying that if you are accepted, you have to attend the college. Uh, the one way that you can break this contract is if you're requesting financial aid or if the, the uh, cost of their school is not affordable, uh, but because you are making this commitment, they're also making a commitment to you uh, and the acceptance is actually more favorable uh, for the early decision pool. Uh, these dates can begin as early as October 15th and around the November 1 uh, deadline. So that will be kind of the earlier dates. Then we have early action that can range between November 1 and November 15th. The early decision and early action uh, deadlines usually have their decisions for admissions by the end of December, right before the holiday break. Um, the next day would be regular decision. It tends to be around January 1. It could vary a few days. Then we have the UC platform. This is the uh, University of California STEM universities. They only have one date, which is November 30th. Going back to the early action, I wanted to mention there are a couple of exceptions that have the REA, which is a restricted early action. And two that come to mind is Notre Dame and Yale, uh, which say that you can only do an early action to their institutions. Uh, so we can navigate those terms uh, more specifically if you have questions on that. Uh, then we have rolling admissions um, and they review applications they are received. The regular decision um, applications are decided by April 1, and enrollment deposit is by May 1. All right, so as we explore our options uh, this, this spring, this winter and spring, 
Um, these are some of the ideas that I wanna share with you because of our limitations with college tours or having any of the college representatives visit our campuses. Some of the families um, have become very resourceful and they are actually taking visits uh, to the campuses and walking around. Uh, there may be some tours that's, that universities are doing, but most of them are canceled, but it's good to kind of check individually to see if they're doing any tours. Um, I will be sharing uh, the College Com folder that I mentioned earlier with the students that has all these incredible links on virtual tours. Colleges have become very savvy on creating uh, websites where you can actually navigate pretty much all of the universities uh, and it feels like you're actually there. Again, research the universities to really find that fit. This is a time to explore. And also I am your resource as your college counselor. Meeting, me, meeting with me um, periodically would be uh, helpful to kind of navigate some options if you would like. For the merit and need-based aid, um, I just wanted to point out a few things. Um, uh, many universities do offer the fee waivers if you qualify to apply to universities. Uh, there is the FAFSA, which is the government money. These are grants, uh, work study, uh, state grants as well, and also where you apply for student loans. Then we have the CSS profile or the IFSA. The CSS profile is done your college board account, the student's college board account, and this is financial aid from the institution versus the government, which is FAFSA. Uh, the CSS has a fee. Some schools um, also have the option of offering the IFSA which is for, it's a free application for, for families uh, not to having to pay for these applications. And then we have automatic merit scholarships that are offered uh, during the application process. In some cases, there are some separate applications uh, that are specific to the university uh, that we can actually uh, separate that I can support the student on. Uh, there's also options for private scholarships these are more uh, the smaller scholarships that we have to navigate to some of those websites like fastweb.com or scholarships.com. Um, it is kind of like a part-time job trying to navigate uh, some of these options and it is uh, time consuming and it does um, offer money, but it really creates, um, it's created so that students can filter whether they are a specific group or a community or if they fall on a certain category. And these actually can add up um, if the time is invested. Uh, we also have some, I also have something I can share with you, which is called the money list. Uh, these are uh, the types of school that historically have offered merit or need-based aid or how much, or if they have any specific um, scholarships that they offer. And I also use the APH historical data that really shows us specifically what colleges have given merit scholarships to our students at our school. So moving a little bit away from the US, I wanted to just quickly mention that I do have students who express interest in applying to colleges in Canada. Uh, our friends to the North have excellent universities, as you may know, quite affordable. Uh, they have wonderful co-op programs and, and many of their majors where they can uh, may, uh, go to a class a semester and then work the other and they get paid and they get paid very well. Um, having a study permit as an international student, you are allowed to work 24 hours, uh, 20 hours a week uh, at any type of place you would like. And students are actually encouraged to stay and apply for residency. Um, if some of those co-ops were to hire them after they apply for college. Uh, Canada, I visited many colleges in Canada. I, I'm very familiar with the college application process if you are interested. I also wanted to share um, some universities that students have also asked about. They wanted to probably venture off uh, to American style universities abroad. These are some of the uh, programs and universities that I have visited. Uh, I just wanna, for example, wanna point out a really cool program like Loyola University of Chicago. Uh, they actually have a program called the Rome Start Program where you, you start the year, the actual four years, you do the year in Rome and then you finish up in, in uh, Chicago for the rest of the three years. 
Sciences Po in Paris, they have dual programs, Columbia University with UC Berkeley, there's Yale NUS and there's NYU Abu Dhabi. So there's a lot of really cool um, universities out there that offer best of both worlds, so to speak. If you're interested, please let me know and I'm able to support you on that. All right, just want to address the gap year. Um, I do have uh, here and there students who are interested in gap years. This is just a, a sabbatical year that students might be interested in taking after high school. Uh, even colleges themselves encourage students to take gap years. So the college application process is the same. And once you get accepted to these colleges and you want to uh, defer a year, uh, all we have to do is contact them know that you are interested in deferring the year and whatever uh, merit or need-based aid you've received, they'll just hold it off for one year and then the student can start college the following year. Students can take the opportunity to work or travel or do uh, other things they may be interested in and that could also be part of their resume if they're interested in that. I've also had um, uh, juniors come up to me uh, this year around summer programs. Uh, I actually do have a um, Google Excel uh, that I put together with some colleagues uh, around specific um, measures or interests that students may have. And I will share that in our chat once I get off the stop sharing screen. And you can actually navigate some of these summer programs. I've already sent a few um, links to some of our students who are interested in medicine or criminal justice, forensics, and who want to just stay local. Uh, so if you're interested in any of that, I'd be happy to share as well. Then as we culminate all of this, some of the things I do uh, with my student life team is to talk about transitions and we discuss things about around life skills and how to get ready for life after college. These are uh, in the form of workshops and we get to talk about what to expect and things uh, they should prepare for as they get ready for college. And that is my presentation. I'll be open up to questions. Evelyn, there was a question that came up in the chat. <clears throat> they, were, um, they said, if, a, if applying to a school for performing arts, are recruitment videos needed or suggested? So in most cases, uh, those are called audition, audition videos. It really depends on how the college wants to do it. So if, for, for example, the student uh, is playing an instrument or if they're singing or if they're dancing, for the most part, they will need a video uh, around that, but they actually will tell you what it should look like, how long it should be, and they actually give you specific guidelines on, on what those audition videos should look like. Sometimes they could do it live, or sometimes they'll ask you, they'll invite you to come to a certain place and audition. So it really depends on that college, but uh, so most of them now because of COVID, they are asking for a video. And I can navigate through the details of that once we get to, to that specific college. Hey, Lynn, um, I, I need to drop off the call, but I, I think this was extremely helpful. Thank you very much uh, for taking your time to walk us through this. Um, only sort of last question would be, are you going to be sharing or socializing these slides with parents once the presentation is done? I can oh, do that. Yes, I can share that with you. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good night. Evelyn, you're still on screen share. I'll stop it right now. Thank you. So now before I forget, I'm going to go to the chat and share that Google slide around the, uh, all of the summer programs that have been divided by, by interest, if that would be helpful to you. These are for the 2020. There are some programs that have gone virtual, but if you go to those links, it'll actually tell you what's the updated version of it uh, because of COVID. Uh, I know that not having that campus experience uh, is unfortunate, but uh, if that's something that you're interested in, there's some that have gone virtual. Uh, let's see what they're going to do around um, summer. Uh, there's a lot of it on that so far.
I don't have any more in the chat. So if there are any other questions that folks might have, feel free to unmute yourself and, and ask your question. Okay. Evelyn, I think we, we might be we might be okay for tonight. We will be sending this um, a link to this video out in the newsletter that will go out tomorrow. So if folks have any other questions, they can always um, watch this again. And we'll also be sharing Evelyn's contact info. And I know she welcomes the opportunity to meet with you all um, at your earliest convenience. All right. Thank you very much for joining tonight. I am here to support you through this journey. So be sure to contact me if you have any questions. Thank you, Evelyn. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Evelyn. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.